Doma Sports Talk worldwide. We got to talk a little bit of boxing, right? So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed, right? So make sure that's in the forefront of your minds when we move on. Now, let me get into it. Uh, November the 12th on Saturday is a very significant day in boxing. So this is no news to a boxing insider, a hardcore boxing fan. But for a casual boxing fan or just a normal boxing fan who kind of just follows the heavyweight division when a huge fight is coming down or going down, right? These people, you should tune in or try to all over the world on November the 12th. There's uh, very significant fights coming. The main fight on that day is Andre S.O.G. Ward against uh, Sergei, the crusher, the crusher, Kovalev. Both of these guys are undefeated. They fight in light heavyweight division. They're going to be fighting in Vegas on Saturday. And this is very significant because they have a, in boxing, they have what you call a, a pound for pound list. And this list is a hypothetical list that somebody puts together or, you know, hypothetical, you know, what could happen if everybody was the same size, who would be the best fighter? So this just means these are excellent fighters. And both of these fighters are in the top four, uh, arguably should be higher, especially one of them. But that doesn't matter. They're both top echelon fighters. And the winner of this fight, uh, his legacy will will rise considerably. Uh, so that's why this fight is very significant. I encourage you to tune in to find out because whatever the outcome is, it's going to be something you have witnessed something. Um, I wouldn't say historical, but something that's very important to the boxing community of finding out the winner of this fight. They will probably put at number one on the pound for pound list. That means the best of the best. You know, that means if aliens came down from the planet Boxopia, right, and they challenged the, uh, the Earthling to a boxing match, we have to send our best. The winner of this fight is the one we would send to fight the alien from planet, what was the planet, Boxopia? You know what I mean? The best on the planet. So that's a fight you need to watch regardless of weight, what weight division. Like I said, it's light heavies. And uh, a little brief because I want to keep moving on. But Andre Ward, for him, it's significant because he's moving up from the super middleweight division, which was 168 pounds, to the light heavyweight division, which is 175 pounds. So he's moving up in weight to fight the most dangerous guy in that division. Um, and he's challenging him which is not an easy thing to do because Andre Award is bringing a massive amount of skills but not that much punching power. And he's, he's fighting the most dangerous guy in the division. So if he were able to achieve this, this would be very big for him. Uh, the thing about Andre Ward is the man knows how to win. He hasn't lost. Guys, check this. He hasn't lost since he's been 12 years old when he's been learning. And on all these things you've done to get to this level, you still haven't lost. So punching power or not, the man seems to find a way to win. So we got to give him that. Now, there's more about him, but I don't want to get into it. We're going to move on to Sergey Kovalev. He's a crusher. They don't give people names the crusher. And you're 30 and 0 with 26 KOs. That's an 84% uh, knockout rate, uh, rate, rate, right? Knockout percentage. So the man is a crusher. Like I said, he's killed a man in the ring. Uh, he hasn't fought the super, super, super best of, of opposition. He had a 50-year-old uh, Bernard Hopkins, but he still beat Bernard Hopkins. He didn't knock him out, but he beat him. Um, he beat John Pascal twice, who the first time, you know, it, it's a name. So Sergei Kovalev against Andre Ward is a fight that is a must-see for the boxing insiders, hardcore boxing fans, but it's a, it, it's a should-see for the rest of us. We should see that because it's the best boxing has to offer at this time. Actually, it should be a lot more hype going on about this fight because it doesn't get any better of this. These guys are both in the prime. There's really no excuses. And um, they're getting it on. 
And as the boxing insiders know, <laughs> you're not getting too many fights where people are getting it on. You know, they're finding reasons not to fight. So this is a huge fight on that day, right? But another fight is going down in Monaco. Yeah, that, that right over there by France. Monaco, you got heavyweights. Louis, the real King Kong, Ortiz. Undefeated heavyweight from Cuba. And what I tell you guys, if you ever hear two words in a sentence when we're talking about boxing, undefeated and Cuban, then somebody's in trouble. Period. He's going up against a guy called Malik Scott. And Malik Scott, uh, what is his record? He's, uh, well, Ortiz is 24 and 0. I think, well, let me see. Did I write it down, Ortiz? I didn't write it down, but he, I know he's 24 and 0. Uh, Malik Scott is 30. Why did I write that down? He's 38 and 2 with uh, one draw. Now, Malik Scott is a guy who's not as big as these most of these heavyweights. He's not heavy handed. He doesn't hit that hard. But he has a very high skill set when you listen to the boxing insiders give you the info on the guy. He's in a lot of training camps, uh, sparring with all these guys. And like I say, he's 38 and 2. But I possess an em empathy cap. If you get you one, I'm going to tell you, this guy in his heart doesn't feel as though he lost maybe one of those fights. He lost to Deontay Wilder, albeit it looked a little weird. Didn't look like he got hit with anything, but it but was uh, reported to be a temple shot. You get hit on your temple, things happen. But that fight against Chizura in England, he was winning comfortably. And uh, he seemed to like get up at nine, but he was counted out. I think they should give these fighters a little bit more time than that. I mean, not more time, but when he get up at 10 and he's not he's ready to go, give him a shot to, to weather that storm. And if he can't, then okay, they call it. But anyway, so he's lost two fights. But I'm pretty sure in his mind, he's only lost one. That draw he had was it's a guy called Glasskoff. I don't want to try to pronounce his for, um, first name. Uh, Vlasilov Glasskoff. Anyway, Glasskoff, and I don't want to get too co complicated here, but he was the guy who fought Charles Martin for the IBF uh, heavyweight title, the title that Tyson Fury was stripped of by for um, giving Vladimir Klitschko a rematch. Right, that's a long story. Vladimir Klitschko, Klitschko deserved a rematch in the, in his fighting clause in his contract. He deserved one. He was ruling for damn near ten years, but the IBF didn't think so. The other sanctioning bodies, the WBO and the uh, WBA, they were okay with it, but the IBF wasn't. And so now we have the, all of this stuff going down. We have new champions. Uh, Anthony Joshua is the champion of the IBF. But anyway, Glasgow fought. Charles Martin for that, and his, his uh, knee went out. I think he was losing the fight. It was only the third round, I think, and he was losing the fight. But it doesn't matter. He was that good, so he's an upper echelon guy. Well, anyway, Malik Scott uh, fought a draw against this guy, 10-rounder, a draw. But everyone everyone knows who really won the fight. Malik Scott won that fight, too. So I'm pretty sure, in his mind, he's only lost one fight. <clears throat> so that fight is going to be significant. I'll tell you why. For Luis Ortiz, it's significant because... If he can catch Malik Scott with all his skill set, you know, all his skill set and speed, and defensive prowess, if he can catch him, right, then he's going to prove his naysayers. He has just a few. He doesn't have many because everyone knows Luis Ortiz in, uh, is dangerous. But if he can catch Malik Scott, that would show the people that think that he's even older than 37 because he's 37 officially. But some people try to say he could be older because he came from Cuba, coming to the States, it's defecting. Sometimes the guys are older, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, if he can catch Malik Scott, uh, that's a pretty good scout. Because a lot of other people didn't. Um, uh, ask Tony Thompson, who's also a big southpaw. But he should be a little, I think he's a little slower than Ortiz. <clears throat> ask Alex Lepai, where Ortiz, um, Malik Scott went down there, to down uh, in Australia, I think it is, and beat him at home. So it's a good scout for Luis Ortiz if he can get him. And Luis Ortiz also wants to get through this fight unscathed because, get this, if he wins this fight on the 12th of November, he's going to step in the ring in a month, which is also unheard of, and fight on December the 10th. Okay, but it's a long story. We're not getting into that. Now, to Malik Scott. Malik Scott is uh, it's significant to him 
uh, for a lot of reasons because Malik Scott is, um, you know, it just will prove that he is really something and it will be good for the guys with no punching power and the guys that people are labeling labeling as uh, boring fighters because they're defensive and, and try not to get hit and just, you know, sticking and moving, which used to be a good thing, but all of a sudden it's boring. So it would be a good thing for him for that reason. And it would also show that he's had hard, he stepped in the ring against these guys. So it would be significant for Malik Scott as well. Um, what else did I want to say about um, this weekend? So those, those are the two fights, the major fights. Now, I don't want to slight another fight that's going to go down later in the evening in Philadelphia. And that's a guy called Danny Swift Garcia. He's going to fight a guy, is it Sammy, Samuel Vargas, right? That guy has two losses. Well, Danny, Daniel Swift Garcia is a welterweight now. He started in junior welterweight, and he basically cleaned out the division, which means he beat everybody who was of significance. Then he moved up seven pounds to 147. And he's, you know, took a couple of light touches, you know, people that are not too hard in the 147 division. But um, the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning him is because he is significant in the boxing scene. Um, he has a very colorful father. And I think I named his father Andy Garcia in another uh, video, which is uh, hey, it's my bad angel. His name is Angel Garcia. And he's a very colorful character. <laughs> you need to listen to him if you want raw entertainment. This is Danny uh, Swift Garcia's father, who is also his trainer, so he's taking care of his little boy. But anyway, Danny Garcia possesses a good left hook, and um, what he's doing, this fight is important because it's a mega fight that's going to go down in early part of uh, 2017 with Keith Thurman. So he has to stay a little bit busy because this year, this is only his second fight this year. But remember this when you have fights with a so-called soft touch. Those are where all those major upsets happen, right? Well, you know, wait, it was a soft touch. Bam. Buster Douglas was a soft touch. Matter of fact, you know who else was a soft touch? I wouldn't believe Evander Holyfield. Mike Tyson thought he was going to be him. They paid Lennox Lewis some money to step aside. He thought Evander Holyfield was the easy route. And the dish didn't happen like that, and I did it. So some of these soft touches or stay busy fights can turn into a, a big upset. And those three fights are going on uh, around the, uh, the globe on the 12th. And for me personally, it's um, a matchup between so-called boring fighters being Andrew Ward, Andre Ward and Malik Scott against these beasts. One is called the Crusher. The other one is called the Real King Kong. Right. So let's see if the boring or the slick fighters can handle their business against these fighters that come out to basically take your head off. It's an interesting scenario. I hope you guys tune in. It's a big day for boxing. Uh, I, I know the boxing uh, insiders are salivating for the last six or seven weeks. So it's a huge day. Tune in. I sure as hell will. <laughs> Doma Sports, excuse me, you guys. Doma Sports Talk Worldwide. And we out.